Hey everybody, welcome to the Cryptopolitan. I'm Satoshi Sean. Glad you stopped by. Well, I'm the ghost of Satoshi Sean. I don't know why I look so white and washed and bright in the corner, but I do, sorry. Um, I've tried turning it down. Um, thanks for coming by. Please, if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. Channel's growing really fast. We're only about a month old. We're just hit 4,000 subscribers. Awesome. Um, also hit the bell for notifications. We get uh, news reports out to you every day, at least one, um, and weekend reports. No matter what, please crush that like button. It really helps us out. And leave me a comment, and I'll definitely answer you and uh, interact with you in the comments. Let's head over to the Cryptopolitan and see what's going on today. Um, first, kind of big news from Samsung that a lot of people aren't talking about. Um, there's all this controversy and and uh, everyone's everyone's up in arms about 5G. Samsung's moving to 6G blockchain and AI. They are jumping leaps and bounds ahead. Um, the vice chairman, a tech industry giant hailing from South Korea, Samsung Electronic Co., reveals that the company is seeking to invest in sixth generation or 6G mobile networking and system semiconductors to stay ahead of the competition in the rapidly evolving tech arena. That is very far ahead. Um, now it's, you know, Samsung is coming out of the, their new phones are all going to have crypto wallets on them. They've been very, very interested and supportive, um, in blockchain technology. They're really moving ahead at a, at a super fast rate, but they've also, it's, they haven't been championing that blockchain, not Bitcoin. They're very, very interested in, in, in cryptocurrencies. There's actually a rumor that with all of this uh, blockchain and the wallets that they're putting on their new phones, they're going to come out with a Samsung token, which would be really cool. Um, now, right after the team panel discussion on collaboration projects for 6G technologies, blockchain, smart contracts, and artificial intelligence, Samsung reveals plans to embark upon a new collaboration, especially for 6G technologies. Awesome. Um... Sticking on South Korea, um, they've done a. They've really been working on some regulation here, which is good for consumers. It's you know, putting a lot more liability on exchanges, um, or a lot more pressure on them. Um, Bitum and four other South Korean uh, cryptocurrency exchanges have changed their liability documentation under pressure from the Fair Trade Commission of the FTC. The Korea Herald reported. Uh, in April last year, the FTC issued a list of recommendations, which is basically do it or else, um, for the major Korean exchanges, which requested them to include more liability clauses in their terms and conditions. Now, following these recommendations, the five exchanges will now be liable for any customer losses caused by fraudulent events. Now, the big thing, though, is even if they're not at fault or if their tech is not at fault, if they uh, usually if it's not their fault, if they did due diligence, they can't really be held liable. But now they are, which I mean, <sighs> exchanges have been making money hand over fist, just millions and millions and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars very quickly. Um, so it's kind of time for them to. Uh, you know, to do what they need to do to protect our assets, I think. But I think it's a great, it's a good move by South Korea. I think it's a, a good move for uh, these exchanges are stepping up and going to, you know, help protect uh, our assets. Um, understanding disinformation through Reddit threads. The, these people did a study, uh, investigators at the PNNL. They published a report that observes... Um, incidents of Reddit crypto debates and understanding if online talk can help price and market performance, understanding the spread of misinformation and, you know, just uh, news and debates in general. After uh, mining the social signals, the researchers link their findings to predict Bitcoin prices accurately. These models will soon be merged into studies based on propaganda and types of social media players most likely to be accountable. So we look for that to come out. It's kind of really cool um, that they they uh, 
basically kind of how the the Russian propaganda scandal with you know the US election last year and how just people can be influenced um through misinformation and through posts and memes and whatnot um and they actually did a study to figure out how that affects the price which is cool this is a very interesting story um it's po- very positive because it's one of the big thorns in cryptocurrency side when it comes to uh the naysayers um busting the myth that bitcoin mining is it's a huge drain on the uh on the environment And actually, most Bitcoin mining is now eco-friendly. They did a a study and a report has um, provided new understanding that Bitcoin mining industry, the report states that the global Bitcoin mining sector is principally environmentally friendly due to the extensive use of renewable energy. Uh, These findings deny past reports and should assist to amend the counter-narrative. A big chunk of, of everyone knows of Bitcoin mining is in the southern China, and basically wherever the, the energy is cheap, but a lot of uh, a lot of more miners are moving, especially in like Russia, Siberia, they're moving towards um, more renewable, geothermic, um, and other types of energy, which has really taken a big effect or had a big effect on the uh, on the uh, mining overall. In fact, Bitcoin mining energy is more than 74% renewable energy, which is way, way above the global average. 74% is huge. Um, so that's a real, I think it's a really big deal. Um, definitely needs to um, be hit home whenever anyone talks about, oh, Bitcoin's just a huge terrible for the environment. All this mining, you know, it uses more electricity than 50 cities or whatever, countries. Um 74% renewable energy. Uh, the report also goes over how much money they made. Miners made over $5 billion in 2018 through the winter at those prices. $5.5 billion in block prizes. Um, it's pretty amazing. That's, that's, that's so much money. Especially now that it was, what, three something? Four? And now we're up to nine, pushing ten. <sighs> Speaking about going up. Uh, Ethereum 2.0 launch is almost six months away, so you should mark the date. Um, had a conversation about this today on the, the Larry and Joe show. Just wanted to kind of lay things out. A lot of people think that the uh, Ethereum 2.0 is going to come out in October. October, they're going to be done with phase one. They sh- they're, they're, they're announcing they should be done with that. It's not going to come out then. They're set to come out January 3rd. <sighs> I I actually thought that they were going to put it off um, because everything, you know, gets pushed back. But this is a huge day. It's not just a day picked and random. Um, this January 3rd is the day that the Genesis block was mined for Bitcoin. Um, so it's going to be the 11th anniversary. It's the Bitcoin Genesis uh, was launched January 3rd, 2009. Um, but they need 2 million uh, Ethereum, so they need the time to get that in there for the proof of stake. There's one other thing that was happening. Uh, I don't know, something else they did on January 3rd, but the main thing is they're, you know, kind of doing it for the anniversary of Bitcoin, which is pretty cool. But I'm really looking forward for Ethereum skyrocketing. I'm really looking forward to the uh, proof of proof stake. Um, that's about it for today, Monday. If you have any comments, please leave them below. It was nice hanging out with you. I'm Satoshi Sean. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next video.